Hi, peeps. I'm Ariel Grace. And tonight we're going to be talking December's astrology. And from what I understand, there is a lot of December astrology. So make sure you get your notebooks out, your calendars out to mark dates. And so that you can move through December with ease and grace. That's why we're doing the shows at the beginning of the month. So you can plan your month, map it out for your highest and best good. And yes, I know we're doing a pre-recording tonight, but Mercury's going into retrograde. And so we're going to float through December with ease and grace. <laughs> So I'm here with Kendra and Hi. she's got some she's got some info for you. So again, get your pens, your paper, your notebooks, your calendars out so you can mark the days so you know what's going on and how to plan your day. Let's use some strategy now these days, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just like the weather, you check it before you decide what to wear and leave the house. So are you surprised that December is going to finish busy yet strong? It's been an interesting year. And so we are not going out with a fizzle. We're going out with a finish line. Yes, we are. So there are amazing, there are amazing transits and sign shifts that are happening from the 1st of December. And some are going to be completing on the 1st of January in the new year. So you'll have a very, very clean slate on some level when we walk into 2024. So if by now you got your notebook and your pen, let's start with December 1st. Yes. Now, I needed this one because uh, Mercury is one of my special planets. It is the ruler of my ascendant. And I, I'm a, I adore Mercury's governances. I love its domain. It is in charge of learning, listening, and speaking. It is the umbrella of communication. And that is what the what of Mercury is. It's been in Sagittarius for a while. And Sagittarius can be a freewheeling kind of sign. If you <laughs> haven't noticed the rising sign of my, there, we go this way, Oral Grace. Yes, I am the rising sign. That is my rising sign. So I go from Scorpio to Sag. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the way that she occurs to the world and the world occurs to her is large and optimistic. And when Mercury's in Sagittarius, you might uh, you might talk a little boastfully. You might say something that you probably should have kept in your inside voice. So with it on December 1st, moving into Capricorn, we've got a sign. If the planet is the what, the sign is the how. And then wants to be a little more reserved a little more discerning, a little more strategic, and a little more business about what we're learning, what we're listening to, and what we're saying. So cool. I love this because I'm right on top of a very dicey little communication battle at work. And I was having my own nerves yesterday thinking I really have no idea how I'm going to plan this talk. And within just a day, I thought, ah, yes, I am the driver. And that's exactly what Capricorn energy loves is it comes out of all of that expansion. We've gone into the subconscious with Scorpio. We come up, we're ready for brand new adventures and manifest destiny with a Sagittarius. And now Capricorn says, great, turn it into building blocks. Yes. So each sign opens up the other. And that's why when the sun goes around I can't get on the camera. The sun goes around <laughs> the whole year. You actually have what I consider a bit of a hero's journey. Yeah. You go from, you go from crawling to walking to running to soaring. The next thing. So the prompt for you, if you are a journal kind of person, or if you just love a good intention, get real with your walk and talk ratio and relationship. Now is not the time to overpromise. Now is not the time to, you know, knee-jerk react to being questioned. Take a minute. Do that like mm, one Mississippi two. Pause to consider. <laughs> yes. What's going to come out is a lot more refined. And that's what Capricorn does is if Sagittarius is horizontal expansion, 
Capricorn is vertical. Right. All well, right. and you know, uh, I taught my mom this this past month. Um, she was telling me some things that you know, just her her little thoughts and stuff. And she goes, "Don't tell anybody else." And I go, "It's in the vault, mom. Locked up, locked in the vault." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, and that's what I do with everything: vault it. Yeah. <laughs> And that is exactly right. what needs to be happening this month is if somebody has told you something that might be sensitive, thank God that Mercury is not in Sagittarius where you might have, you know, a little bit of an adult beverage and then feel free to discuss. <laughs> this is a very, very sober sign. And that's why it's in charge of building businesses. Business transactions are different. That's movement. The blueprinting of things is exactly what Capricorn said. Hold my beer. This is the, I've got this. Right. So that said, on December 4th, which is Monday, Venus moves into a sign it's not super happy in. Venus is in charge of love, beauty, worth. Basically, we can break that down to how do you... Uh, how do you appreciate, how do you like being appreciated as a person, but as a planet, what we're doing with it is it's ruling finance and romance. And it's in the sign of Scorpio. And this is where the homework is. Hmm, I have to eat my peas before dessert, huh? Okay. <laughs> Other planets love being in Scorpio. I put Mars in Scorpio and you will be throwing a fish into water. You throw Venus into Scorpio and it's the it's the invitation to go back to your formative years and say, how am I really imprinted around money and love? Right now, you, may, you know, childhood may have been a long time ago for some of you, like these two girls here, these queens. <laughs> and it may be really hard to remember, huh? Yeah, no matter how hard I work, I'm... I'm so weird when the bill shows up even for $10, I get neurotic. Yeah. If you're going to have Venus in a Scorpio sign and she has to, she has to be who she is. She's in charge of finance and romance. Yeah. So go into that subconscious part of yourself and scrub that stain a little bit in your brain. As I say, take a look one last time. And is there ever a last time? <laughs> Where did I get these, if I slow down my conscious mind, what was my origin story? What was my first experience around love? I grew up in a very cold household. The marriage between my parents was very non-emotional and non-communicative. And you did not talk about money. And it was always a surprise or a bonus. It was just assume that there is none, don't even bother asking. And if something shows up, lucky you, today is Christmas. Right. And so that kind of hide and seek with cash ran me for a while. I forgot about it when I became an adult and got these fancy jobs and started getting adult life, like a car and an apartment. But when times got tough, that mindset would show up. So your prompt, whether you journal, or you like a good intention, here's your invitation. Go and take a look at that origin story one more time around how you got modeled in the very beginning around finance and romance. You'll find, okay. that, you'll find that it's really, it's very, it's every story, every individual story is going to be different. And so you'll see that when you are creating your intention as you are manifesting and as you're clearing out those goo and cooties, you're going to find that, um, you know, you feel better and that you see that this past thing is, has no power over you anymore. Cause I, I grew up poor and I didn't even realize that we were poor until I got, older you know so um it wasn't we didn't really talk about like being poor or anything we talk we spoke a lot about budgets the adults around me spoke a lot about budgets but um i didn't even realize that 
you know, we were raised in poverty <laughs> until I got older. And then I was like, oh, okay, now I see. And so when I realized that, I was like, well, you know, I, I don't have a big, I don't have a big angst around it, but I do feel like, I feel like there are a lot of people that do. And so those of you who are watching, look at that. And if you, if it makes you feel anxious, your past and your poverty, then try to clear that out because that's not who you are now. You are a different person now and you can see it step out of the situation and see it in a big way and be able to resolve it within yourself. Okay. Yes. And that space is so good for you because I'm, I'm decades away from my origin story. And remember your, if we ever get into a talk about the planet Chiron, it's not really a planet, but everyone's going to go, well, well then what is it? Planet. <laughs> Planet, planet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the your pain is somebody else's solution in a certain part of astrology. Is it's a pain to power thing. One of my exes grew up in a very warm, very loving household with gambling and spending problems. So you have to have money to have gambling issues. You can't yeah. you can't do that if you're poor. So so. This is somebody who is paralyzed around having to think about cash. And I could use a little more of that freedom. And he could have used a little more of that, you know, thinking ahead. So yeah. there's no wrong origin story. If it still hurts, right. give yourself grace. You're miles away from it. And at some point, it should be fun. Like, um, a Sherlock Holmes mystery, going back and checking it out one more time and seeing how you can shift that needle or take a little of that stain off because you're you now. Right. You're different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Should we talk about, should we talk about the oh, dun, 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 Mercury retrograde? <laughs> the Mercury, you know, I, I do, I actually do my best writing during the retrogrades. I'm planning on it, like. I love that because I heard they, about it. I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I get some, you know what? I get some. I get some ish tied up in retrogrades, and so first of all, we've already discussed what Mercury is in charge of. It's in charge of learning. It's in charge of listening. It's in charge of speaking. Mercury is going to retrograde in between Saturn and Capricorn seasons. Why is this important? Is because when you take that learning, listening, and speaking, which is normally external, it's a dynamic. When it's in retrograde, it's an inside job now. So communication and writing is a part of it. I'm not surprised that those times are prolific for you. We are in a sign that is the most buffered Mercury retrograde you could have. This is this is a drop in the ocean as far as, you know, any sort of, oh, no. The reason why Mercury in retrograde, and it will come out January 1st, you'll get that clean slate. You're going to go inside, you're going to review, refresh, and relearn in the realm of Capricorn. What is the realm of Capricorn? Capricorn is a builder. Capricorn is structured. Capricorn loves a plan loves a system, loves order, loves operations, and most importantly, it loves time and karma. Karma could be said differently as you reap what you sow. Now is the time to reap what you sow within yourself, not out in your outer life. Go in, do a meditation, do a practice, do a routine where you are cleaning up you to you. And watch what happens as far as that you going into the new year. It's like when people start working out in the winter before spring, and now they're like, yeah, I can fit in all my summer clothes. Plant those seeds now so yeah. that when it's your new year, if you are a resolution person, we are 0% shocked that resolutions fall in Capricorn season. I mean, those are peas in a pod. Yeah. 
And if you know me well, one of my one of my one of my isms. It's like, oh, what is one of Kendra's mottos? What's the plan? What's the plan? We gotta have the plan. I love the plan, but what's the plan? What's the plan? <laughs> That's what I say too. It's like, what's the plan? How are we doing this? When is yeah. it gonna happen? <laughs> set up the parameters so that I can freestyle within but if you know you don't pour milk on the table you put it in a glass yep. then you can drink it however you want so contain some of these things for yourself and you're going to find that it's going to be a blast because I think Capricorn season is one of the most it's the universal donor there's a little bit for everyone it's not like certain times of the year where it's water on the witch i do very poorly in the overly feely ones or the ones that are very beginners or you know uh leaping before we look where it's all impulse and all you know fake fearlessness no capricorn is it's a one size fits all you're gonna do great i don't and feel the heaviness that I usually feel before retrograde right now. I actually feel it, I, I the energy doesn't feel as like tight or um, heavy. So, yeah. and I, so this retrograde, I feel like as long as we, as long as we make a plan, like a structure, a flexible structure through this and let Capricorn teach us how to do it. Like Saturn does. Saturn is a task master, master, right? Yep. Not my favorite planet, but this, what Saturn does that I like the best is it has actually taught me how to structure my days, my weeks and my months so that I do accomplish the things that I set out to do. And I, I really believe that this Mercury and retrograde is going to help um, some of us go, okay, so what is it that I want to accomplish next year? What am I finishing this year? What am I continuing? And clarify some of that. And also, you know, sometimes we make these plans and um, they get a little bit elaborate. And so you can look at the elaborate plans and go, okay, so which one, what part of this is too fussy? What part of this um, doesn't get me to here? Instead, it distracts me. And so mm -hmm. I really feel like that's what this retrograde can help us with. Exactly. If we are in a 10 day countdown towards a retrograde, Mercury is already growing up in the sign of capricorn and this is a good time and that's why it's going to be an easy transition kind of like when you walk down the floor of a swimming pool it doesn't just drop to the deep end it's a slow slope and you you're going to be fine and it also loves efficiencies as ariel was saying is plans with too many moving parts and variations usually get in its own way yep so Saturn is also in charge of construction. It is the, uh, it is, you can sum Capricorn energy up in that measure twice, cut once, is stay on your efficiencies and you're going to have a beautiful result. Long game is the strong game, as I say, in both tarot and astrology when Capricorn is involved. Right. I think I like the long game, actually. I'm good with it. <laughs> As I as I get older, it's more interesting, but it's still within my nature to enjoy things that can get, you know, for those of you who are in our generations, my cousin is June Lockhart. She was T America's TV mom. She was in Lost in Space and she was Lassie's mom and Petticoat Junction. She said, where else can you go where you can have a problem and it's completely buttoned up in 25 minutes with time for commercials? Right. <laughs> so I loved that. And I thought, well, that's why I prefer watching movies to TV. That's why I prefer um, listening to music versus, uh, you know, on the radio versus sitting still in an opera for three hours. Not everything in my nature is stretched out and elongated. 
my in my chart everything seems to be all in like two places <laughs> well, yeah you know what how about how, <laughs> We missed your birthday doing this. We should do a let's walk through your chart or my chart. We'll, we'll come up with that next year. We'll do some. Or oh, hey, we do, you know what we could do is we could do a drawing. We could have a bunch of people like, you know, tag a friend on Instagram or whatnot. And we'll use your chart as one of our. Oh, our that'll drawings. be fun. Yeah. So if you guys, yeah. if you all want a free astrology um mapping out like share this video let's you've do got tag, you've got let's, to tag us you've got to tag you got to tag me or kendra and so um and i'll put our uh, i'll put our facebook stuff all our information in there we need to if you want something free going on you gotta work for it well actually it won't be free it'll be an equal exchange <laughs> of energy, of energy. <laughs> so Perfect. you want this give us a, give us some love share this around tag us let us know where it's going we'll do this for the new year one we'll do this for your january yep. so. for january we'll do this for january so get ready all right <laughs> details de details coming right and here's the deal too uh, i would appreciate it for those of you who are watching this um if you will like subscribe, um, follow, whatever you have to do on whatever platform you are watching this on, please do that for us because we totally appreciate it very much. We Thank do. you. Yeah. All right. All right. We got... I know there's other planets doing other things, though, no. during, during December. <laughs> well, well, sure there are because I've got a few more that we're going to discuss. Cool. On the Good. first, which is the shortest day of the year, that is the winter solstice. Yes. And then that's always been a special time for me is here is the bottom of that bell curve, and now the days get longer. And so the sun is going to move into Capricorn season. What are you supposed to do with those four weeks? Work on your practicality, work on your efficiency, work on your discipline, but most importantly work on your lessons right work on your lessons it's a sober sober sign remember and the sun is your self-expression and your methodology and so that is very important if we're going to you know if we're going to piggyback on capricorn season what's in your way saturn also loves subtraction it can say this is no longer serving me you've heard that to death what does that mean let go of what you're resisting right it's surrender time surrender doesn't mean quit it means stop working against the flow right exactly you know when it's not working mm -hmm. because you're flying 52 times and nothing is moving right <laughs> and if you're if you are a project manager personality type like i am um i come up with three buckets when something is frustrating the the hell out of me do I deal with this now? Do I deal with this later? Do I deal with this? Never. They're all options. So switch it up a little bit with some strategy to it. And you will find that Capricorn season can be one of your favorites because you will go from teeny, teeny with a little baby to you'll go from student to master. That's exactly what Capricorn wants you to do. It wants to elevate, refine, and educate you. Right. Yeah. I love Capricorn. I love January. I love that month, the end of December, the beginning of January, because it is a time where, you know, I, I plan again, planner. So, um, <laughs> I just to it. blow the energy, man. <laughs> Such a sobering sign. You know, it loves to, it loves to crush distractions mm -hmm. and get you know, in a clear space, I have such clarity in January. I just, I, it's, it's like, it feels good. Oh, the trash is taken out. I got a whole <laughs> new blank page. What do I want? What do I really what do I want, want to do? do? What do I really want to do? <laughs> yeah. It's that, it's that Spice Girls. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Right. Exactly. 
I can't believe I'm going back to my 90s self because I have a daughter. I just bought the Spice Girls too. And you thought, you would have thought I just gave her, you know, an unlimited bank account. This kid is rolling in the gold of the Spice Girls. <laughs> You're welcome. I'll just build a monster for my best friend. Hey. No. That's what we're here for, though. <laughs> Auntie Kendra rents. She does not own children. <laughs> right. So here's the good news is on the 29th, because Venus is a faster planet, it's closer to the sun, its orbit is smaller, it's on the inside of Earth, it's yeah. going to move through signs fairly fast. Can you believe? Lo and behold, by the 29th of December, Venus has bounced out of Scorpio, where it has to do all that uh, subconscious looking at. Intro, introspection. <laughs> Yeah, all that introspection and all that, uh, what's my origin story? <laughs> but uh, it will be moving to Sagittarius. It's going to love optimism. It's going to love new experiences. If you can clean up your junk around finance and romance, get ready to reward yourself with a new perspective on both of those dominions. It would be an excellent time to see what's on sale after the holidays and treat yourself right. to something. It would be a fantastic time to start looking at are there any really great places that I haven't gone to and I can get myself a very affordable ticket, plane, train, automobile, you name it, car, road trip. If, if it's, if you're in nice climate, bikeable, go right. somewhere new and give yourself a new view. Have fun. Yep. 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 And if you don't think Sagittarius is fun, well, then you certainly haven't played with Ariel. So. <laughs> No. If I had a dollar every time she giggled in the middle of trying to tell me something serious, I'd be a very wealthy woman. <laughs> hey, I'm very serious. Very serious. Serious. <laughs> so that concludes where the planets are all shifting so that you have these milestones and markers on which areas of your life to work on. And here's the great news. December is pretty much about communication and your value systems that's fantastic and of course you know let's throw in that seasonal change from sagittarius to capricorn w yay thank you it's already its own gift yeah. so we know how we divide this if you've been a fan of the show for a while those are all the planet changes some people call them ingress you know if you want to get fancy like that and now we have to hit the two highlights of the month that we are most familiar with is where is the new and the full moon going to be? On December 12th, folks, there's a new moon in Sagittarius. Within Sagittarius, yay, double <laughs> pleasure. And I mean that. You are, you are here for the optimism and the manifesting. This is called get it out of your idea factory and get cracking on making it happen and don't be surprised if people are incredibly receptive to it. I have already started making some phone calls, coming up with some ideas, because as I'm warming up to that, that moon sign, I'm ready to, it's one of those, a new moon is let it grow. Let it grow. The ground, you're planting. This is where you sow. And then the full moon in Cancer. What do I reap or get rid of? Full moon and cancer can be tricky for people who really aren't smushy or are not down with that, you know, mothering energy. So let's talk about how to win that game because I'm one of those people. I, I do not like the moon and cancer. I don't. I'm. Well, my experience with cancers, uh, many, uh, like almost like, well, I would say 75% of the cancers that I have met have been very needy. <laughs> it's because they are the bank of fulfilling needs. So if you're constantly giving, are you ever receiving? And right. then you're depleted. So it's a sign that requires, it requires some balancing. It's, you know, everyone's got their, everyone's got their high, their light side. Everyone's got their, their dark, their shadow side. The full moon in Cancer inside a Capricorn season is it's too much 
moon. The moon is too moony. The moon is mooning really hard in a sign that's like, can you take all that, you know, squishy and, and just nah, in another sign, another season? Yeah, scooch it. <laughs> How what do day you, is the full moon? Yeah. How do you win this? <laughs> Bring support, structure, or system to your sensitivity and your emotionalism because you have an unmet need. And you've got to figure it out. And, they, you know, they say name it to claim it. Right. If you don't know what it is because you're not looking for it, then you're never going to discover and correct or balance it. So when the moon is full in cancer and I'm like, blah, everything is so sensitive and I'm not being sensitive. Am I being sensitive about sensitivity? Am I being insensitive? <laughs> I put it in a very good container somewhere. And the way that I can nurture is I go back to things that I've had to let go, like all those little toys where it's grow up time. And if any of you watched the Barbie movie where women have to break up with their funsies and guys get to, I mean, my ex has a Batman car on his recording studio deck. He's 60. So what I do is I allow myself when the moon is full in cancer yeah. is there we go. That was my segue. Show the cat, show the cat. I have a kitty. <laughs> you have to, you got to go be a little kid. You got to go be a Toys R Us kid. You got to go, you know, I don't know, get yourself a happy meal at McDonald's. Remember your, remember the part about being a child that was, you know, where you I were, you were needy you were fun and it wasn't a crime what day is the full moon full moon is on the 26th guys it is the day right after christmas so if christmas is a little heightened as far as everyone's up in their feelings don't be surprised find a way to put some structure around that find a container for that find support and a system if things are starting to get a little too touchy and everyone's using their feelings as facts so right. Again, where will I be on Christmas? I will be in the gym. I will be in the movies. I will be at the sushi bar. I'm not doing this. <laughs> well, Mercury will still be in retrograde, so I will be home. Nope. Writing. <laughs> and what better way to, you know, what better way than to pour your guts out on a page if it's, if you are having emotional overload you know some of the best things come out of allowing yourself to go there one of my one of my older psychic mentors she said either write the world's most melodramatic love letter or write the world's most oh my god burn this now rage page and i thought yes and yes <laughs> So I do, I do my love letter and I do my rage page often in cancer seasons or cancer moons. It's a good time. Yeah. And it's there you have it. Get rid of doing cooties. Yeah, especially if you, you know, put you know, put your soul into it a little bit. Out. So there you have it. Though that's what you need to plant. That's the let it grow when it's the new moon on the 12th and Sagittarius and the let it go. Dump it, remove it, give it a haircut. Bye bye. Yes. So we want to we want to do that, and then that way we do start the new year fresh. We start it in a good way, and so that and it really is this month, so you can get through with ease and grace and get into the new year in the best way that you can. So be aware of these dates. If you have to listen again, listen again. I'm sure Kendra will be putting it up on her group um, and on Facebook. It's Know Yourself Well. You can check out that group. You can join it and you can follow her on Instagram at Know Yourself Well there too. So listen and remember, really just connect to you because a lot of times when we just connect, we feel how we feel, like we go with how we feel, then we're able to really live honestly. We're really able to live 
in a good way, in the best way that we can. Yeah. You don't really have to change anything. Just connect to yourself and follow that intuitive hit, follow that feeling, follow that knowing, whatever, however, which way you gain information, follow through so that you do live your life with ease and grace. Yeah. Authenticity is a very underrated place to be, but you want to speak your own language. Yeah. One on the inside that you're, that you're oftentimes having to put in the back burner in order to mask your way through certain things. Yeah. Take the mask off. Be you. Yep. All right. Well, that is everything for astrology. I do have a special announcement. I'm finishing up my certification in geo astrology. Nice. Geo. Oh my God. That's so cool. I love I know. That. Really, like this year, this year, all of my prizes are on the inside. I can't really say it was the greatest year in the world ex in my external life inside. It's been a wonderful exfoliating and renewing. So what is geo astrology? What is it? Because I know what it is and it's fun. <laughs> it is a branch of astrology that came to popularity in the 1940s that takes a look at where the planets were falling around the world and how have you ever had a certain place, whether you went there or you just thought about it, that either really beckoned you or kind of repelled you. For example... Uh, I really have always wanted to go to Paris and I have had zero desire to go to London. Well, why could that possibly be? It's not, you know, it's not justifiable. They're just urges. So what geoastrology is, and it goes by other names. It goes by astrocartography for some, Astro yeah. and it goes by relocation astrology because everyone needs to rename things so that they can feel you know, every generation, every you do thing, we're talking tomato, tomato, it's the same thing, but yeah, call it something different. Yeah, that's not confusing. At any rate, so it goes by three, it goes by three names in less than one century. How about that? Uh, but what it does is it takes a look at meridians that line up with your birth chart. And along these meridians, there are going to be opportune zones for love luck, career, family, fun, success, and of course, you know, problems and, uh, you know, and very, very difficult life lessons. Right. So since I'm getting my certain that in January, I will be offering, that would normally be a $60 reading. It will be on sale. It will be the intro price of 50 for the entire month yeah. of January. Because I would like to give something to people who get something out of having new information about how they're built and not who they think they are. And also, if you really are considering a vacation or relocating, you know, changing and getting transferred, this has really helped. And it explained why, why I couldn't get out of Chicago. One of my passwords was Austin 2009. I went to Austin in 2008 and I set my sights on this is going to be my new hometown. 2009 was a long time ago. Why every time I get a job that I'm interviewing there, does it vaporize? Why am I constantly unable to go to this town? I mean it. When I was a kid, I used to drag the Texas puzzle piece around. I just, it's my spirit home. Why am I not there? Because my North node, my destiny is smack dab in the middle of Chicago. Yep. I love Chicago too. Don't get me wrong. I love Chicago. This is too cold for me. <laughs> so until I finish that last piece of my puzzle and I truly let go of my ego external world, I, you know, I got to finish my homework here. Yeah. This is I'm on a destiny as a life path and what well, we all are. We all have a journey to have and I'm not done. So until then, I can't pull that sword out of the stone is it's Chicago. And I'm not joking. I once had three job interviews lined up in Austin, Texas. 
my last name is Lockhart. Lockhart is a suburb of Austin. I thought I couldn't, you know, the invitation couldn't be more hand engraved. <laughs> and one of them was even going to fly me out to interview me there. And within a week, they all just said, we're yanking the job. We have filled it internally or uh, we'll revisit this in six months, which meant never. Right. So I go, I visit, I get my, I fill up my cup, I get inspired again. And I know not now, but also not never. And it makes, that helps me revision and reinvigorate what am I doing here and how close am I to completion? So that was the whole reason I got inspired to take the program in the first place is I had that burning question of, is there some sort of invisible leash to this city? I don't hate Chicago, but it's like an electronic fence. I truly can't leave. <laughs> so I got my answers and I also got to find all the wonderful places I can go and visit around the world for career inspiration for, you know, that eat, pray, love. Where am I going to have a blast? Where am I going to potentially find some business? Da, 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 da. And that is both domestically and internationally. So there you go. That's what I've been doing with my October, November and finishing up my practices and I'll be ready to go right around Capricorn season. How great is that? That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's perfect. <laughs> and we have to remind people, so we'll be reminding you in January as well for the January show. That way you can book appointments with Kendra. Okay, because astrocartography is, it it is so, it's so interesting and it's really cool. And uh, you can learn so much about yourself and where you've lived and what has happened to you in those places. As you're as you move through the the map and the astro astronomy, it's really just it's so interesting how everything just lines up. It's really cool. I it's fantastic. I will give an example. One of my practice sessions was on my friend Alyssa, and we found that her Mars line went through Indiana. She had no idea. She went to Butler University, and. I said, you're going to have a ton of ambition in Indiana, and then you're going to want to get out. She said, that's where I went to college. And as soon as I graduated, it was too small. It was irritating. And I said, that's perfect. And then I said, hey, you've got a destiny point just outside of, you know, almost at the, Miss the Mississippi River boundary. She said, I met my husband in DeKalb, Illinois. And I said, <laughs> so Mississippi. Mississippi River. <laughs> she has found places. She is now a property manager. She's got property in Florida. She's one of those few people like Ariel who has magic for her in Florida. That is one of my repel zones. I get, do not send me to Florida ever. My best friend lived there for seven years. I said, I'll visit you when you transfer to Arizona. Right. <laughs> I, I like Florida. I just, I yeah. now live in California and, uh, North Carolina, <laughs> but <laughs> and what's even more fun is she plans on taking the kids to a trip to Japan because that's where their grandmother was from. And I said, it's got a Uranus line through it. Anything goes. It's one of those trips where do not bring a plan and don't be surprised if the most unconventional things happen there. One of them may decide I need to start applying for uh, internships internationally. I said, don't be surprised if a part of them doesn't come home where they bring a piece of that back. So these are the things that, you know, I'm not here for entertainment. I'm here for education. Get right. yourself educated. If there are things that you're just stuck at, because Lord knows I can't stand being stuck. And I'm here for those people who are just like me. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving, baby. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So this is the end of our show. And I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. I know it's pre-recorded this week. Uh, we had some Mercury and retrograde things happen. So it's all good. Uh, leave your comments down below. Let us know how you like the show. And uh, we'll be back with the astrology show next month. 
the first week of January. Next week, we'll be doing a regular live show on Sunday night. It'll be very fun for us. So remember to practice your gratitudes, change the chemistry in your brain. All right? All right. So have a wonderful week. And remember, keep your heart open and align with the energy of love. We'll see you next time. Bye.